Hey, and welcome to this third video in, in this series. In the first, uh, I talked a bit, little about uh, what's included in the SAP B2B add-on. In the second, I talked about a comparison between Seaburger and B2B add-on. And now in this one, I'm talking going to talk about uh, migrating from Seaburger to B2B add-on. And the thing is, as I mentioned in the previous, uh, the amount of investment Seaburger is going to make into the EDI tools is probably quite limited uh, given that they don't have any potential new customers. So it's all about figuring out what we currently have and then find a solution for how to deal with these uh, these issues. So uh, yeah, you're going to migrate away from it uh, or for that matter, other EDI formats, I guess, uh, uh, progress, I guess it would work uh, much the same way. So uh, the thing is, you if you're going to the, to the B2B add-on uh, and you're still using Seaberg, I envision that you are just provisioning a new PO single stack system where you are in including where the B2B add-on is included in your license. And then it is quite relevant to to get it then um, it's probably the yeah so it's single sack and migration of this type uh, this uh, this type of migration does take quite a lot of time you need to do a lot of work making sure that all the things that you have done is still working stuff like that so you don't want a big bang implementation uh, where everything's going live at one time uh, you want to test one message for one partner, then you want to test uh, all messages f for that partner or uh, all that are using that uh, that message. So there's different way you would you would scale this, uh, and that's what I will be covering this presentation. Some ways to do that. So one of the things that have changed around this is. The schema that is used, uh, that's being used, have changed a little. So here we have the B2B add-on, and we see it starts with invoice uh, 96A, so that makes it easy to understand what it is for a message. Whereas the Seaburger starts with a list. I couldn't get it on here because, uh, yeah, not enough room for it. Um, but that's e fairly easy to, to change. Under the UNH, for instance, here they've put the values where in Seaburger they had all the different values under the UNH. And then you got to the BGM as, as a subset here. So I guess that one's quite nice. Uh, the group segments have been changed. So it's just with uh, going from uh, GSSG1 to uh, just 1S, GSG1. It's not a big thing, but uh, it still means you have to update your mappings to it. And then you have uh, on here, for instance, uh, one at the end instead of just no no values here. So it's not big things you need to, to figure out how to do, but you have to go through all of these and, and remap them. Uh, that's the, the mapping tool you can use to, to update the, the mappings, but uh, yeah. It does take time and you need to make sure it, it works um, and you map things correctly. So in that part of the process, you probably need to be a bit careful about what you're doing. Uh, so one message at a time, going live, and how can you do that? If the message is coming from ERP, you're probably, yeah, you do it one message partner at the time. Um, if if it's on a separate system, obviously it's fairly easy. You just change the port and then it would be processed uh, over there. Uh, EDI properties, you uh, could also be, be used for this unless you have used them for some specific uh, functionality internally, but that would be a place you could otherwise use it. But I think you could just use a new port and let it run in, in that way even though it's on, on the same system, would still be an option. If you have the flow that's coming to ERP, uh, 
I guess there should be some arrows, but at least you can see there are some 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 here. Um, so we are getting a message, in, and the way I propose is that um, you just send normal in to to the Seabird flow. You do the 997 splitting, uh, figure out if the message should be processed or not. Um, then you can start removing the partner and messages you don't want, and then forward these to the B2B add-on. Uh, so if it does not find a message that is relevant for this, it will just be sent to the B2B add-on, and then you will process the message over there. Uh, and then once you got all of the messages uh, moved, uh, from this van provider, you can then start using uh, the other approach or start setting up the B2B add-on to start reading these messages. You could go also go the other way around about saying, hey, uh, read this folder in the B2B setup, and if we don't know it, then send it to uh, the Seaburger flow, and then it will be processed there. Um, but I think it's, it's easier just to have it in the Seaburger, uh, remove them or put a comment in them and then uh, put, create a, a custom uh, module that would look into the Seaburger table, figure out is this message relevant or not. And if it's not, then it will just uh, uh, process, uh, continue processing and then it would be fairly easy to, to split them out in the receiver message. Um, if you're using AS2, then, well, there there's also some some changes. The URLs have have changed. Uh, before it was call, just called Seaburger AS2 or something like that. Um, now it's called AS2, and then you can put whatever you want uh, under that. So it makes it easier if you want to have uh, splitting based on the messages and stuff like that. So. Uh, but if you just want to migrate partners, you don't need to worry about that. Um, the way you can do that is just to, uh, you probably have a reverse proxy somewhere in the line on the ICM, and you could just use the ICM to rewrite the request internally to point it to the new system. The benefit of doing it that way is it enables you to easily switch back if something is not working. Um, obviously, it depends on how many partners and stuff like that you're dealing with, how you want to do it. If you just want to migrate and to use the new one, or you just say, hey, from outside it's ten transparent, you, you, it will still work the same way for the partners. Um, so if you have a lot of partners, that's probably the way I would do it. So it externally still look the same, but internally, you would rewrite it as uh, you wanted to. So now it's just up to, to learn it. I've created some, some training you can find on picourse.com uh, to learn how to use the B2B add-on. Uh, otherwise, there's some great resources at scnsap.com, uh, helpsap.com, and there's uh, also some when you download it. So I really hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, please help uh, share this, uh, either uh, share the blog or the video, subscribe to my channel. And I really appreciate all the, the comments and feedbacks uh, that you can give of this. So um, I yeah, hope this has been helpful and I'm looking forward to talk with you soon. Bye.